Everyone, how's it going? It's Longboy R8237 here. I actually already filmed the video that you're going to be seeing after this clip on how to um, repair the air vane governor. Whenever I started, I didn't know what the um, the actual problem was, and I said I say in the video a few times it's not a how-to video. But once I get my new part, I show you actually how to install it. And if you want to go right to that step, how to install the air vane governor on the cream style carburetors, there'll be the time stamp right down there. Go to that time and you'll be able to get right to the repair. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Today I have to fix my Lawn Boy R8237. What happened was yesterday while I was mowing some grass with this mower, it was running perfectly fine. I shut it off, and then whenever I went to restart it, it revved up really, really high. I quickly shut it off. Thankfully, there's no damage to the engine. I took off the air filter cover, and I looked in and I saw that the little throttle disc is not in the shaft anymore. I don't think it got sucked into the engine because there was no loud noises, so today we're going to take a look at it and see if we can fix it. By no means will this be a how-to video and actually step-by-step -step what to do, I'm just diving into it blind and we're going to see what we can see. So I'm going to just start by taking off my carburetor. If you would like a video to see how to take it off, click the link right up there. So I'm just going to get this off, pop open the air filter cover, move it out of the way, pull out the sponge, pull out the little caps, put a rag under here. Make sure my fuel valve is closed. Undo the screws. Put another carburetor. See if I can get the timer line off of here without destroying it. Okay. Right here. I'm gonna bring down the camera so you guys can see if we can um, see the flap. Uh, now it's pouring down rain outside, of course. So here's the carburetor, and you can see um, there is no air vein inside there at all. Also, another thing I'm noticing is that, look how loose this is. There's like nothing there. I'm not sure if um, something broke and that's why it came in. So I'm going to come over here. Let's look in there. Ah, uh, yep. Right on the bottom, you can see this little gold piece. That is um a throttle speed shaft. Made out of bronze. You can see there's some really shiny spots on it. Let's see if I can get this to focus. My camera's having a really hard time focusing. You can see that there's these really um shiny spots on it, and the edges are dull. That shiny spots actually where it's worn. I can actually feel it's really rough there. It's actually worn away, but there should be little um half moon circles that you bend out I can see mine are hardly bent out I just think they got a little bent out of shape but down here where the reeds are there seems to be no damage at all luckily I stopped this in time though if your engine ever over revs you want to quickly shut it down else it will throw a, a connecting rod so uh, let's head over to the um, workbench and see what we can do here Alright, I've got the carburetor on the workbench. I want, hopefully you can see, um, that this is loose. I mean, this camera has horrible autofocus. In all my videos, you can tell how bad the focus is with this camera. Well, it's not focusing, of course, but I found out that whenever you put in the little disc, that this governor arm, it actually pushes down into a little hole, and the disc is what keeps it from moving up and down. Here's my um, disc. 
of course it doesn't focus but there's these little tabs you can see the shiny part there's little half moon tabs beside it that you're supposed to bend open that prevents it from sliding through this slot in that center shaft so I'll get the camera set up on the tripod and I will show you what I mean by that I've got this um, set up to the best of my abilities if you notice here on the um the throttle disc, how there's a hole on one side. As far as I can tell, I've looked in the Lawn Boy service book. It doesn't matter if the circle's on this side or this side. You can actually you can only actually put this in one way because it is in the shape of an oval. From my memory, I always remember the circle being on this side, so I will um put it in with the circle facing up. All you have to do is just slide it in. You need to make sure that it um it's a little bit too far. You also need to make sure the disc is down all the way. Yeah. Something might be even me something might be actually a little bit messed up with this whole governor assembly. It really feels quite loose. But I will um if this disc is bad, I do have another disc from a different carburetor, even this whole air vein assembly, so um, I might change that out, but I'm going to see if I can open up those little disc passages a little bit more, then I'll get the, or the little half moons, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. From looking at my spare carburetor, I've determined that my shaft at this little um plate it ha or slides to... The bottom is broken. I see how I can slide that up and down. It means that the bottom is actually missing a little piece of plastic. So now I have to disassemble this whole thing and swap some parts from my spare carburetor. That's additionally why it was always so loose is because there's a little bit. You can see on one side there's a little dimple on the bottom of this shaft. That should be longer. and I, Apparently it's broken off so... I'm going to film this whole process and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm just going to take out the the disc. This is all messed up here. I'm going to try to keep this spring. The spring it attaches on this side, so I'm going to just disconnect it. That pulls out nicely. I'm gonna get you a a close up. I'll get a close up shot of that once I get the um the one from the other other carburetor. I'm just gonna leave the rest of this stuff here because I actually want to um I like this style of high speed adjuster better. While I'm here, I might as well take everything apart just to clean it. There's the um. This was the speed adjuster. I think this piece is, um, I'm not going to remove this piece. I'm just going to keep it here. All right, now we're going to disassemble the other carburetor so you can see how everything works on the other one. Before I disassembled this black one for parts, I wanted to show you how this stops moving once it gets so far up because the disc it was not able to slide out. That's why I have to um take out this main shaft in here and put it in my other one. So we will start the disassembly. I'm gonna grab some needle nose pliers and pull this straight out. Good. Let's hope nothing broke. No, nothing has appeared to have broken yet, so that's good. Now I'm just going to slide this whole entire... I'm going to... Hopefully this will actually work. Now I'm going to give you a comparison of the um, these two shafts. Alright, I got the two shafts here. This was the broken one. See how there's barely anything at the bottom and see how you can see right through the slot there's no piece of plastic blocking the bottom one. 
It's going to be hard to describe this, so I'm just going to mainly do visuals. Here's the one that's good. See how there's all that plastic in the bottom, and there's um the slot or the um the throttle disc plate can't slide down. So this one, the old one, is clearly broken. So I'm going to swap it out with the new one. So this one will probably be thrown out or whatever. I'll probably end up keeping it. So now on this one here, the one I'm going to use, I have to slide off the speed adjuster. Just like that. I am noticing some differences here. Yeah. Actually, these two I don't think are actually compatible at all. I will see if I can make it work. But I don't think these are going to be compatible at all. Yes, these are definitely two different styles, so I will have to order the one that I need on eBay. Okay, so what I ended up doing was I ordered a new one of the air vanes on eBay, but I figured I might as well show how to reassemble um, the other style with the actual slider piece here. Once I get the um the new part I'll say what the part number is and everything. Okay, let's see here. This goes on like this. Well first we have to actually um here's the spring. Where's the camera? goes on just like this we slide that piece on like that that goes down like that then we take the air vein slide that through good then the little wire piece this little slider goes on you can see how it um it tensions it that barely has any tension, so I will tighten this down some. You can see now it has way more tension. Okay. Next, I'm going to reinstall the throttle disc. Little disc here. You can see the slot in there. What you do is you just slide it in place until it snaps into position. And you want to make sure everything's working very smoothly. You can see how everything works very, very smoothly. Now I can go put that one back on the shelf. Then once my um, new air vein comes, I'll be able to finish up this video. Okay, I'm back everyone. It's a few days later. Before I shut off the camera last time, I showed reassembling the air vein governor on the black carburetor. But after I shut off the carburetor, I mean the camera, I went ahead and just reassembled um, the air vein governor on this cream carburetor. And you can see in the background here, I have an eBay box. So, I'll be able to replace this air vein in the last shot like I said it was bad and I tried to replace it with the um the air vein from the black carburetor so I'm going to show how to remove this now because I know how to do it so now I'll show you that so in the opening in the back of the carburetor you can see this little bronze piece there we need to pull that out so what I'm going to do is just um I just take some pliers you just hold the air vein you just Give it a little wiggle, it should pop out just like that. So now that our little disc is removed, I'm going to just come up here and pull the air vein out. You can see how the spring, it catches on this little piece here. Also, pop that off, just pull it up and slide the whole air vein assembly off with, here's the spring. The spring, it actually, um, it kind of hooks on to there like that. The camera's not focusing. I'll show you that, um, 
later than this little collar piece right here that the other end of the spring was hooked on to. You spin that to adjust the speed for the carburetor. Okay. Then on the carburetor we have this speed adjustment lever here. We don't need to take that off unless yours is broken. It simply pulls off, I believe. So I'm going to get out my um, new air vane. As you can see here, my old one. I will compare these two to um, show you so you guys can see. One thing I wanted to show you is this is actually a new old stock part that I got on the camera. This looks like um, brand new paper, but in person it's actually quite yellowed and beat up. You can see it's actually in that Satoru Genuine part. And the part number for this style is 609630. If I can find one, I will leave a link in the description. It's not an affiliated link at all, so I don't get any money if you order a part at all. I'll link that right to the Lawn Boy website, but that is the part again for this cream style carburetor with this style of adjustment the screw on the side some of them they have the bolt on the top but this is for the screw on the side with this um it's not a slider it's kind of an easy swing kind of thing so i will just open this up here okay and here we go so here we have the old air vane governor on the left and the new one on the right, and I want to show you these two. See how the um the bottom of the new one has that nub sticking out of the bottom, and the old one does not, and that's because it broke off. Also, see how um you can see there's nothing on the bottom at all. The slot goes straight down. The new one is not like that. There's that little nub on the bottom, and that was broken off of mine. So what happened is this would just keep popping up and down. And my little, um, the actual, um, piece of metal that governs the speed, it just popped out. So that's why my engine over-revved. So now I'm going to show you how to install the new one. So here's, we find the little slot right on the side of it. And here's my spring. See how it kind of has that little bent hook on the top and then there's just a straight wire. We want that bent hook to go up. So again, there's my little groove right there. We slide this on, there's my little bent hook, it goes over the top and just kind of slides in place just like that. Try to get a good view, so let me give you a side view, it kind of can be a little tricky to take out, but it kind of just, um, that little slide it goes over and then I'm putting the little, um, the little tab, it goes right over the top, just like that. Then take your speed collar. Notice how there's that little plastic um piece that sticks up. We want that to go up. Oh, my little thing already popped out of my governor there. It pops out quite easily, so you might want to hold it with your finger. So again, the plastic nub goes up. We are going to slide this on and put the wire a little end through that hole like that see how I just kind of um I just popped it in place and put it into that hole like that that's how you install the spring then we're gonna grab our carburetor let me zoom out a bit here so here's my little hole in the top I want the air vane to be facing that direction of I put it in so what I will do is I will just um, slide it down through the hole. Then I'm going to push this collar down so it seats into the grooves just like that. Then in the inside here, see how that's not pushed down all the way? I'm just going to push it down like that. Turn it so the slot is facing me. Then I'm going to take my um, circle disc with the hole facing the left. Whenever I'm going to put it in, the hole's going to go on the top. I'm just going to 
push it through the whoops I have the um, air vein and I'm holding it with my hands I'm going to take the little circle disc and I want this hole to be facing down whenever I install it so I just um start it by hand and I take my pliers here heard that little snap you can see whenever I close it it's fully closed also how um here's my governor I have to tension the spring some right now the spring is so loose that it's automatically forcing it closed so to tighten the spring I lift up on this collar here and turn it counterclockwise a few turns then push it back down and now you can see how my governor is fully to the right it's got good spring loaded action you want to make sure that whenever you're doing this, it fully is closing. It's not stick. I mean, it should be fully opened whenever it's in that position. You want to make sure that it's not sticking, that it can easily be pulled back. Because the way these governors work is that these this um, piece here, it goes right beside the flywheel. Whenever the flywheel creates air, it's always trying to close it. This is no throttle at all. If you held this here with your hand, your engine would die. So whenever it's running, it's constantly trying to close this. But then the engine speed slows down and it just kind of stays here like that. And that's why whenever you move this speed adjustment lever, it puts less tension on the spring or more tension on the spring. So it's whenever you have it on less, the slow speed, it can push that further. But whenever you have it on high speed, it has to fight that a little bit more. So, and that is how you um, put on the air vein for this cream style of carburetor with this altitude adjustment screw. Now let's go put it on the mower and we will start it up. I'm going to have to adjust this speed some whenever I put it on. It's better to have this on the... Um, it's better to always start it on the lower speed right after you do this if you don't know what you're doing because this is real floppy. It's kind of a little too loose on low speed. But I know what I'm doing because I've done a, quite a few of these. And then I will, um, I'm not going to check it with a tachometer in this video. I'm just going to get it to where I like how it's sounding. And then I will um, show you how that is. So let's go put it back on. Alright, yeah, so I have my um, mower out again. Again, if, if you would like to see how to install a carburetor, there will be a link right up there. Click on that and it's going to take you right to a video where I do close-ups and everything on how to install the carburetor. I'm just, I'm just going to do this real quick. I can move this rag out of the way here. First thing I will do is find my primer line hook up that primer line next thing I'm going to grab my fuel line and just get my fuel line on get the air vein into the hole also make sure whenever you um, install your carburetor that your gaskets in between the carburetor and the engine I'm going to um, just grab my screw. Again, sorry if my head's in the way. I'm not exactly showing you how to install this. I'm just trying to get this done so I can. Uh, to show you guys how it runs.
want to make your screws fairly tight and you don't want to over tighten them because these carburetors are made out of plastic and mine actually already has a small hairline crack but you want to tighten these up fairly well so that the seal the gasket gets pushed in real tight there we go my screws are in I'm going to install my caps sometimes your mower doesn't have these because I learned that these are actually like um, an optional feature something I guess you could probably buy some of them I believe did come with it also one thing I forgot to mention in my overview and demonstration of this mower is that this air filter cover here is one of the newer styles that I painted lawn boy green there we go I'm gonna take it into the backyard and I will get some show you um how long it takes to get going and we'll see how it runs alrighty I'm going to turn the fuel valve on I'm gonna let the fuel, the carburetor fill up by the way if you would like a full video about this mower click that link right up there and I'll take you right to a full demonstration of it switch is already on let's give it some primes the reason why I gave it so many primes is because the first three primes I could hear that it was just pushing air but the last four it was pushing gas so let's see how many pulls it takes to get her going you could hear how um, low the engine was running and that's I had it on high speed so what I'm going to do is tighten the governor collar. I'm going to try to show you actually how to do that now. Well I can't, um, just I cannot, I don't have a tripod that's low enough and I can't hold the tripod. So you're just going to have to see from up here. What I'm doing is remember that little, um, the speed adjuster collar? What I'm going to do is pick it up and turn it counterclockwise. And what that does, that applies a little bit more tension to the spring then after you do that you just want to make sure you get it fully seated just like that okay I think it might have a little bit too much tension so what I'm, what I'm gonna do is start it on low speed and ease it up into high speed if you're never unsure if you have too much tension Always start your engine at a lower speed to prevent over revving, revving and destroying your engine. Now we're going to start it back up again. I still want it to be running faster on high speed, so I'm going to do the same thing. Lift up that collar and turn it counterclockwise to apply some more tension to that spring. Just like that, and just like before, I'm going to start it on low speed, just in case I, I move the camera up a bit. Let's see how we do again. I want you to be, be able to see me moving the speed adjuster. So here we go. There we go. Some people might think that's a little bit um running a little bit too fast. It's probably running maybe uh 
75 to 100 RPMs, a little too fast, but I'm going to run it a little bit faster to get to some of these, some thicker grass, so, um, one thing that you saw me keep having to prime it to get the engine to go, that's because I have to adjust that little, um, screw right down there. I will be making a video of it, so, though, again, there's going to be another link right up there whenever that video comes out. You can click on that link, and that will show you how to adjust the um, the altitude screw on this style of carburetor. So again, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.